Hello, my friends. Welcome to Hip Hughes History. Today, we're going to do a group. No, we're not doing a lecture. Today, we're doing basically a how-to behind the scenes. How do we make these videos on Hip Hughes History? Lots of teachers have asked me, and I'm just going to show you how I go about doing it. Um, we're not going to talk a lot about the planning process, really about editing film, I and mean, hopefully that'll give you the uh, gusto to go about and maybe take a crack at it yourself. So what are we waiting for? Why don't we go giddy up for the learning? I guess that's what we'll call it. Uh, and we're gonna go get her done right now. Hey, what's up my friends? We're about to show you how we go about, on Hip Hughes History, doing a video. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my jacket on, which is over here. So here we are standing in front of the camera. Uh, this is called the rule of thirds. You don't want to stand, especially with a green screen. And I can show you that this green screen is just over a blackboard. That's all it is. It's just kind of on a hook and it just kind of hangs right there. But you don't want to stand in the middle of your green screen because if I do that, and I'm kind of looking through my phone, we have a, a Canon 80D that allows us to wirelessly like, kind of look at our shot, then I, I can't kind of superimpose images, you know, on the right or left without it being kind of weird and such. So we stand just kind of over to the side a little bit to give ourselves some space. And now we're gonna grab our jacket. And here we go. So I'm uh, much more comfortable in a jacket, but you certainly should be if you're gonna be on video. Be comfortable and be your natural self, I guess that's what I would say. Um, so whenever I begin a lecture, I always want to, um, number one, break it up, but always start, even when I do categorical breakups, uh, with something separating the video. Number one, this is gonna give you the opportunity to take it slow and not you know, try to remember everything at once. So certainly you're gonna make mistakes along the way and we'll show you how to deal with those, but it's easier for kids to digest, no doubt. So just having a little jingle and a little title between your clips is gonna give your kids a breather and kind of allow them to reorganize the material. So you'll notice we have two mics going right now. Um, this is a Rode Broadcaster mic and it's hooked up to uh, my MacBook Pro. I can look over here, huh? Um, and we're running just GarageBand to get some nice crystal clear audio. Uh, the Rode Broadcaster is fabulous for that. Our backup camera is just a Rode shotgun mic that's on top of the DSLR. So we have a backup sound. So in case something goes wrong with this one, we got that one. Um, whatever you're using, you should try to use something. Uh, these guys are pretty cheap up here, like 99 bucks. But if you're using your internal microphone on your devices, you're probably not going to get great sound and that's going to bug you after a while. So I'm going to do my traditional pop-up and do the beginning of this video. Hello, my friends. Welcome to Hip Hughes History. So oh, there you go. That's just a little pop-up. Now, in terms of planning your video, I, I don't, I don't know where to look, hey, I don't recommend that you, you script everything out. If that's something that you have to do, you might want to consider other types of videos, like voiceover videos, and that's a completely different genre. And I believe in differentiation. Some videos work for some kids, some videos work for other kids, and there's really great YouTubers out there that do these kind of really great imagery, really great titles with just a voiceover, so you can concentrate on your script. But if you're a teacher like me, I believe more in kind of face-to-face -face interaction. Uh, that's the kind of kids that, you know, I, I like to reach out and touch. Creepy, I think you know what I mean. And I just think that for me, when I was a learner, having that kind of personal connection, hopefully even through a camera, um, can help the learning go a little bit smoother. So what I do is I just kind of sit at the computer and uh, I go through my, my brain of what I know and do a little research and I just kind of do scripted out notes, but I, I'm not really looking at them um, because if you're doing that and you're looking up and down, that you know is pretty obvious and there's ways to get around that with cutaways, but if you're a good lecturer, if you, you, know, you know your content, content is king and concept is queen. But if you can really do a lecture where you really attack concept using content, I believe in the Goldilocks theory that you don't want to have too much content, but you do need some content in there. You want to find the amount that's just right. I try to keep them under 10 minutes, but I definitely break that rule all the time. I think it's great when I do an awesome five minute or under video, but number one, Break down your content. I mentioned this before. So categorize it. I generally think of everything like an essay. I want to start off with, you know, usually causes, go into 
a sequence of events, do my effects, and I try to categorize that to make it easier for me to break up the content, but easier for the kid to digest the content as well. So today, we're going to do just a few sections. Right now, this is the section talking about planning. But if we get right to it, again, I'll just repeat. I believe, you know, if you know your content, just take some good notes, really work out your analogies. Um, I have some videos that talk about good lecturing and how you really don't want to be dry and talk about the content from just an academic discourse, but you want to try to use analogies and ways for kids to understand it where they are, right? We're building bridges of learning. How about that? And then you can just put your notes right down here. Um, I lower the Mac a little bit because I don't want shine in my glasses. That's why I do that. And I never have the lid open because that's going to shine as well. Um, I just want a nice clear shot. Um, we have a couple lights in the back. I think they're just halogen. They're impact lights. Um, you don't necessarily need lights. Sometimes they're uh, more trouble than they're worth, but um, definitely in a dim room, they're going to help out. But if you're in your classroom, just put your camera between the fluorescence, so they're kind of in the middle there, and the green screen should work out just fine. So bring your notes up. Uh, you kind of know what you're doing in a general sense, and then you're uh, ready to go. So we're going to get ready and do the next section, which is basically actually lecturing on camera. So why don't we do that right now? So when you're actually ready to film, we talked about using the rule of thirds before, standing out in the center of your green screen. If you're not using a green screen, you know, I showed you we have a chalkboard behind here. That can be cool as well. You still are going to be able to layer. And I do this after the fact, and I'll talk about this in editing. Like, what am I going to show when I'm talking about a certain concept? I don't want to show a million images, but images are a meaning maker. You know, it's a form of literacy. So if I can do that, whether I'm being very literal and I'm talking about George Washington and I throw a picture of George Washington up there, or I change the whole background to make it George Washington. We'll show you that in the edit as well. You really definitely want to uh, think at some point about that, whether it's before or after. I'm an after guy. Some people plan it out before. But either way, using text, using color, using font choice, using imagery, using video, um, they're all spices. If I'm cooking up a meal of learning, you know, the primary... Uh, you know, ingredient is really what I'm saying, obviously. And then there's all of these other ingredients. Secondary might be how I'm moving my hands and my voice or my accent or um, lots of different things using body language and your own self. But then you have all those other layers in editing that you're going to be able to pile on as well to really make it an experience to watch your video. If I'm just looking at someone talking and nothing else is going on, a child's mind is probably going to wander. But all the time I ask people, how long can a kid pay attention? And they generally will say, you take their age and cut it in half and add that and you have the minutes. So a 12-year-old, 12, 6, 18 minutes. And I go, have you ever watched a kid play Xbox? So once you get the redo downs and you can kind of cut your video up, you don't want too many jump cuts. But if you do a lot, you want to probably cut those out. So if I'm saying, for instance, and that's why uh, we won the Civil War. Now you can see I can say it all together. And that's why we won the Civil War. There you go. Why don't we talk about the actual edit now and get into the nitty gritty. So you just watched a really weird video of me kind of talking about, you know, me filming and how I film and making mistakes. Now we're going to show you the edit and how we actually do this using Final Cut Pro. Now, if you're using a different editor like iMovie or Movie Maker or, um, you know, Move AVI, there's all of Sony Vega, there's all of these different editors. Just watch a tutorial and many of the same things you're going to be able to do. It's just going to be a different system and we really don't want to teach systems. So I'm just going to use the one that I have and hopefully we'll really be thinking about layering and how we can use the edit process to make our painting of meaning even more bright. So here we go. Let's get started. So at this point, we're going to cut to the edit. And now I'm going to film my screen to show you how we actually cut this up a little bit. We're not going to do a lot of editing, but just enough to get you excited. So here we go. So we're going to record our external sound using GarageBand. You can also use Audacity. I have my broadcaster mic hooked up to an icicle. And in GarageBand, uh, using voice quality, I'm just going to record that sound. And as soon as I'm done, I'm going to be able to export that after the video is done as an MP3 on my desktop. And we'll show you how we sync that up later. But that's how we record sound. With my filming done, it's now time to import my video. So we're going to open up Final Cut Pro 10. And it's pretty easy to import the video. The first thing I'm going to do when it loads is I'm going to start a new event. You can see my events on the left side there. 
So we want to start a new event so the video is packaged nice and organized and all that good stuff. And then as soon as we do that, we're also going to start a new project. So that project would then be stored in that event. But whatever program you're using, it's going to operate the same way. I, I think of my events as uh, the refrigerator. I'm not cooking with that food. I'm just going to uh, have that food available to cook. So what I'm going to do now is open up my Finder and just navigate myself to uh, the main film that I have with my Canon DSLR. So once I find that, I'm just literally going to drag and drop it into my event folder. And again, whatever system that you have, it pretty much works the same way. And you can see once I drag those over, they're going to pop up into my event folder. And then I'm going to be able to use those to edit. Now, I also have some phone footage on my iPhone. So I'm going to do that manually through the import procedure by clicking my import arrow. And once I do that, it's going to hook up with all of my devices. But my iPhone, it's the easiest way to get it in. So my iPhone is called Tesla, go figure. And once we click that, we're going to see all of my footage uh, that I could import, but specifically the shots that we took in the back of the room. And we're just going to import that into the same folder that we imported the previous folder. So now I have the food I need to cook with. So the first thing I'm going to show you in Final Cut is how to make a title opener. You definitely want to start with some kind of opening to get people's attention and to label your product. So I'm just going to hit the T for titles and I use really basic titles. There's tons of titles. I just normally pick something in the center of the screen. Um, but you always want to edit those titles. So when I go in here and I double click on my title, um, it's going to open up the title engine in a sense. and I'm going to be able to type in there. I'm going to want to make sure I really manipulate the font. So I like impact font, so I'm going to change my hip hues to impact. I'm going to scale it to make it fit, and then I change it to orange. It's sort of the color that I use for my titles at least. And then once I do that, there's actually a line spacer in here. So I'm just always thinking about design, thinking about making everything balanced and everything you know, look decently. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take that title and make it a little bit shorter. I like about a four second title. Um, well, now you can see me zooming in and zooming out. That's a big feature, so I know what I'm working with. But if I take that title, um, I can copy and paste it. And now that title, I'm going to change to the actual name of the video. You have to think of everything in a video editor, no different than text in Word, where I can copy, I can cut, I can paste. So just like I did before, I'm just taking a minute here to uh, kind of make this look decent. And again, always work with your font type, your font size, and your colors. And I think colors can be used quite effectively sometimes when you're um, using certain colors like red on fire with a really easy example but once we have this title all set and done we'll be ready to get into uh, the actual video editing actually let's start with transparent images if I have an idea like the name of this is behind the scenes I might want to put curtains on there I want my curtains to be transparent so when I'm working in education public domain I'm just going to Google and I'm typing red curtains PNG that's the trick and if you're using PNG you're gonna be able to find what are these kind of grayscale images you're gonna see one pop up in a second um, but once I find one of those where I open it up and I have that background uh, grayscale look to it you'll notice when I drag it in from my desktop that it's transparent and now one of the biggest features in any editor is this transform button so you can see when I click that, I can literally you know, deal just with that object and move it around and scale it around. And here, just balancing the title with those background curtains until I get something that I think looks good. And now we're ready to move on. So it's time to layer music and we're going to put my intro music in right now. So I'm going to go into my iTunes and the song is literally called Happy Hip. I found it online. It was a copyright free song. So I thought we have to go with that. But music, you just drag in and you can see I'm dragging it in now. Just going to move it over a little bit. And that's basically how we put our music in. At this point, it's time to take the food from the fridge and put it on the stove. So I'm going to grab my clips and there's a video drawer here and um, you can take just selections of a clip but I usually take all of the clip to edit and I'm just gonna grab my green screen footage and I'm gonna drag it down to uh, in front of my title and that's how we put the footage in 
So now it's time to sync my external sound. And before, you saw me create that MP3. So I'm just gonna drag my garage sound in, that MP3, and drop it in. And if I up all the volume layers by dragging those bars up, I'm gonna be able to match the sound waves. And usually what I'll do is, I'll just kinda zoom in a little bit in order to get it perfect. You can see me splicing it right now. But if we zoom in, um, I should be able to get those bars almost perfectly matched. And once I do that, then I can turn the sound off on the top and I'm just using my external sound to edit my film with. All right, it's time to make some green screen magic. Most editors have green screens built into them. Um, mine is in my special effects and it's called keying. So I'm just gonna click my keyer and when I drag that effect on, it's gonna take the green out and you're gonna see I'm just gonna have that uh, black color in me in there right now. Now you can use anything for your background. I normally just use a solid texture in my movie program. So when I drag that down, I'm gonna drag it underneath the green screen in order to fill that background. So any video or object can be transformed, um, even yourself. So if I click the transform button over on the right, I'm gonna be able to shrink myself, move myself, spin myself. I could copy and paste myself if I wanted to, but it's important to make that realization that everything that you have in your editor is an object that can be transformed. So let's just show you a little bit of cutting by using the beginning title sequence in my intro. So all I'm gonna do is turn my editor into a blade. I use the B button and I'm finding where I do that pop-up and I'm gonna split not only the top section, but also that bottom audio section and my background. It makes it for a cleaner cut. And once I do that, I'm cutting the song as well the same way. I'm gonna be able to take that title, I'm gonna copy it, and I'm gonna paste it at the end when I duck down. And that's my intro section right there. The only other thing that I do, maybe you notice, is I actually cut my pop-up where there's no sound. I'm gonna click it and do a speed effect on it. That's how I pop up so very fast. So you're also gonna wanna make sure you control your music. Um, what I'd like is the music to start loud when I start talking to have it lower, come back on loud. So I'm doing what's called a range effect. That's gonna allow me to just select the portion of the music where I'm actually talking. So once that section is highlighted, you can see I have it now done. I'm gonna lower the volume on there, and then I'm just gonna use the markers to fade in and fade out. So the intro flows nicely into when I start talking, and then it flows you know, out in the same kind of way. So now that the intro is done, I'm gonna hit the play button and let you take a look at it. But you've kind of already seen it. Hello, my friends. Welcome to Hip Hughes History. Today, we're going to do a group. No, we're not doing a lecture. So I'm going to continue creating segments with these titles, but I'm going to put new music in to have that as a transition with my title. So I love television themes. I'm going to look for Night Court right now. And once I find that song, I'm just going to drag it in as an object, and I'm going to cut it up a little bit so you can see the song is going in right now. It's going to drop in there, and then I'm just going to clean it up. I'm going to uh, drag in the beginning a little bit so the music starts with a beat and then I'm going to back it up so as I'm exiting the film the music starts and then I'm going to cut it after the title is over and you can see me doing that right now. We're about to cut it with a break and then I'll delete the second portion of it and then all I'm going to do is fade in the beginning and fade out the end. There's usually little knobs. There they are right there um, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm actually breaking that piece off where there's no sound so I can do a speed on my pop-up. I did that before, but I think that we're pretty much all set now with using um, a short snippet of a song as a transition. So when you're actually ready to film, we talked about using the rule of third. So layering visuals in your project and video um, is going to probably be the most powerful meaning maker that you have in the edit process. So I like to do it all the time. So what I'm going to do is basically find um, a PNG of George Washington, like we did before with the curtains, and I'm going to drag that into my project where I'm talking about George Washington. Of course, it can be any concept. I'm going to use that transform button again to treat it as an object and just slide it on the second third of my screen there. And that's how I insert objects into my video. 
The next thing I'd like to show you is switching your green screen background out. And you could also do a cutaway, it doesn't have to be in the background. But if I want that crossing the Delaware shot and I find that nice big picture, I'm always looking for large images, I'm gonna do the same sort of thing. I'm gonna click it and I'm gonna drag it to my desktop. But when I drag it in, if I want it to show on the entire film, I drag it on top of me. But because I want it below me, I'm dragging it below me, but above that blue gradient background. And then again, I'm just transforming that object so I can actually move that image around until it's just perfect on the screen. Now I know we showed you text before, but I want to remind you and encourage you to use text on the screen anywhere you think of it. It's another great layer to pound a vocabulary word or an idea or make a joke. And again, I'm just dragging it in. If I drag it on top of me, um, it'll be on top of me. So I want to make sure that it's going to fit nice if it's on the top. If it's going to spread across the screen or hit my head, I would drop that text below the green screen. But again, I'm always thinking about editing the titles, the font type, the size, manipulation with color to make sure that I've made every decision that I can make in order to um, push as much meaning as possible in the editing process. Um, all we have to do is change that pretty color to a nice red. So if you're making educational videos and you want a video background and you have an idea, I wouldn't take very hardcore copyright stuff, but if somebody has stock footage on YouTube of whatever, let's say it's a volcano exploding, um, you can grab that YouTube video. You're just going to take the link of the YouTube video and make sure that you copy it. And then there's tons of sites that do this, but basically what you want to do is go to Google and type in something like YouTube Converter. I'm telling you there's a million sites that rip the video and the sound for public domain educational types of things. So I'm gonna use the first one that pops up and then I'm gonna paste in that YouTube link. It's set to MP3, I'm changing it to video. Then I'm just gonna convert the video. That's gonna allow me to download the video and then once it's downloaded, I think you know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna to switch to my finder navigate to that volcano video and I'm gonna drag it underneath the green screen just like the George Washington crossing the Delaware shot from before we want to make sure that that goes underneath once that background is in there you can edit it like any clip if it can use two seconds or the whole thing and then I'm just gonna use the transform button to kind of move it around you can even flip it and I'm gonna do that in a second in order to get it in the right spot but take your time, play around with these objects and your backgrounds, um, and after a while, it'll, it'll be nothing but a thing for you to create anything that your imagination can really come up with. And now we have it perfect. So what happens when you make a mistake and you restart a sentence or you get the word uh in there? I do this a lot. But it's easier for kids to digest, no doubt. Um, so just having a little jingle. and a little... What I'm going to do is I'm going to find that sound. And sometimes I'll use the sound waves in my ear. And then what I'm going to do is really zoom into that sound to find where I want to cut. I'm cutting an uh right now. So I actually blade cut it right before the uh and then right before I start speaking again. And I'm also gonna cut above it. So I'm cutting the green screen, the sound, and the background. And then I'm gonna make sure it sounds good by hitting play, but that's how you do it. But it's easier for kids to digest, no doubt. So just having a little jingle. And... So I've shown you probably just enough to get started, but once you go through that process and you make your first film, you're going to want to export it. You can see I have a lot of film in there. You're just going to go in Final Cut to File Share, but all of the programs have this option. I'm going to always export in 1080, make sure that I'm getting the best quality that I can. And then once you're all done, you hit save. It's going to throw your video into a drawer on your computer and you'll be ready to upload on the Internet. So the last thing I would like to show you is how I make my thumbnails. You can use Photoshop. There's lots of different things to use. One free program out there is called The GIMP. I do like saying The GIMP. And The GIMP allows you to create thumbnails quite easily. Um, put 1280, 720 is the dimensions in there. And then everything is drag and droppable. So I'm going to actually drag a PNG. Remember PNG. And then you can see that I get my little object in there and I'm going to conform it. And I love the GIMP because it allows you to conform anything to your barriers, to the size barriers that you might have. I'm going to put my titles in now. 
Um, and just the same way I controlled my titles before, I'm going to control them in the GIMP. I'm going to make sure that they're bright, that I'm using color, that I like the font. And at the end of the experience, I should have a thumbnail that I'm pretty happy with. So that's how we make a video here in Hip Hughes history. Um, it's a lot of fun. I enjoy doing it. And I certainly hope that anybody who wants to do it, that you do it. My philosophy has always been just do it. Don't worry about mistakes. There's no way to learn how to play Xbox without playing Xbox. So what are you waiting for? You can use your iPhone camera, get started, get that sucker stabilized, stand in front of it and start explaining things to the kiddies. And then you can be a YouTube teacher as well. All right, my friends, we'll see you next time you have an itch for the learning. Don't forget, you can go to www.hipcues.com and check out the video arsenal. We have almost 500 videos now cutting across the span of the social sciences. How about that? All right, my friends, you know what I'm going to say because I say it at the end of every lecture, every done because I mean it with all my heart, where attention goes, energy flows. We'll see you and you next time you press my buttons.